team that I manage, we've got five staff. Um, and across the college, we've got three work placement teams. So each one of them is responsible for looking after different areas within the college. Um, just a sort of very quick background about myself. I mean, I've worked in, worked in FE, I've worked in adult learning, I've worked in work-based learning. Um, I've sort of got quite a varied sort of industry. The one industry I've never worked in, and I know practically nothing about, my colleague Sam sitting <laughs> on the left here, I, I know nothing about digital other than I can use words like um, Python and blockchains now and again. Um, so if it's a technical question, I'm the worst person to ask. Um, I joined Middlesbrough College, I think just coming up five years ago. Um, same, same sort of role, but after about three and a half years ago, I was asked to start working with the digital team. So really, they just coming in just as the T-levels were starting to be introduced to the college. So just to give you um, a very quick overview as regards our sort of story so far, Year one um, of the actual T levels because um, because we never tried it before. Again, we knew we got to do the two year placement. Um, what I literally did was the summer because I do work year round, and in the summer I'd approached a number of employers and started talking to them about the the T level placements. Who was interested? Didn't want to know a bit more about it, um, and decided to ask how many would be willing to come in and talk to students in the October about their company about the opportunity of placement. And to be quite honest, we had um, a far better response than I thought we'd get, in so much as we had about 12 to 15 employers that agreed to come in um, around, I think it was the second week of October. So what we did was effectively do like a speed dating opportunity. So students had to research the company prior to the, um, to the actual date, and they were then had the opportunity to literally take part in a 10 to 15 minute interview with each one of those employers. After that, I then contacted the employer and said, which of those students were you interested in offering a placement to? And then we, we, we took it on from there. Now, whilst it, it was good, uh, we quickly realised that one of the problems was that a number of those students started to complete their, well, their, complete their placement by the end of the first year. So in some instances, there were students that already had the conversations about, well, can I take an apprenticeship with you? And the, effectively there wasn't sort of a streamlined process in so much as their progression so working with the um, curriculum team we very much talked about what do we want to do year two um, and we decided in year two that we'd go for an april start now again by doing the april start what it meant was that there was a, a an excellent opportunity for students to progress from the sea level directly into industry into university or onto an apprenticeship because they would complete their placement around um, sort of 12 months following year, again, just before their exams. Um, but by doing this, it also enabled us to get a better understanding of the student as well. So we actually knew a lot more about the student before we started placing them, what their issues were, what support they needed. Um, and they also went with some skills to the employer. Now we've done exactly the same for year three. Um, and to date, I would say you know, it, it, it seems to be working quite well. Um, with no, I mean, I, I sort of say, no, I look at some, you'll please um, offer some uh, input as well. Uh, we've got no plans to change it. Um, it seems to be working and we do a two day placement model where students go out depending on the, con uh, sorry, the timetable, either on a Monday, Tuesday or Thursday, Friday. Yeah, from the um, curriculum point of view, the April starts, for our curriculum planning, we deliver all the core topics and ESP and finish at Easter. So the students actually starting their um, work placement at the Easter actually helps us as well. So um, then it's not having a massive impact on their learning. Um, they've done most of it. We're just recapping and, you know, going back over things and look at certain things. So the students that are going out from the April are well prepared and ready because they've got the first year under the belt, we're just ready for their assessments. So it, it works well for us, it works well for the employers, and it's easier for Kevin to get to know them a bit better. Kevin, can I just ask a quick question there? What made you choose a more day release type model rather than a block? The, with the block, is, I mean, and again, I've talked about this, but very difficult to manage. You've got to get in order if you're going to do a blog you've got to find an employer that can actually is, is able to take a group of students on for that period of time mm -hmm. and and again it's it, it it takes a lot more 
um, effective sort of management working with the curriculum team. How do you get a group of students out of a particular block within the year? Um, mm -hmm. It just, you know, we haven't tried it. Um, and I, I, I think, you know, sort of thinking out loud at the moment, it would be very difficult to actually manage that. The, the mm -hmm. other reason for this, effectively, what we're trying to create is a roll on, roll, roll off process. So, for example, at the moment, students will be going to placements that have had students in the previous year. Now, if I put a, a block of a group of students out in a block, say, for, just for sake of argument, in a February, then I've got to keep that that employer warm for another year before I can put another block out. We're very much trying to keep, and I say, we'll talk about this a little bit, just keeping the employer warm and keeping it ticking over. Mm. Um, when have we, you ever um, had... Sorry. So, we sorry, have... sorry. We have a digital advisory board here and we took it to them as well. So the digital advisory board is um, sat with all our employers, uh, well, the majority of them, and they preferred the two day approach, um, mm -hmm. thinking that it would, because there are only small companies around us in Middlesbrough, it was easier for them to manage having them for two days a week, other than where a block placement, like um, Kevin said, there's a lot of management on it. And yeah. they found that having them two days a week was more manageable for them as a comp as companies too. Have you ever had a situation then when um, you've had you've had to persuade a company to do day release rather than block? Have they come to you wanting to do block and you've had to sort of change it, or or has it just always worked out okay? No, and I think it's probably sort of jump into something I'll talk about in a minute. Is that the, oh, okay. the, sorry the part the part of the role? I mean, part of what I do is employee doesn't know what they want, um, and I think it, it, it's it's having that conversation to effectively, um, they will always come out with that they prefer the Thursday, Friday. Some of them don't know that once start talking to them, but that's what they prefer when we come out at the end. Um, okay. We okay. haven't really discussed that. It's similarly, you know, when you talk about um, it, it, students can go to two employers, but again, from an employer's point of view, if you've just invested effectively for 20, 22 and a half days in a student, getting them comfortable in your business, why would you then send them on to somebody else? Because this is when they can really start getting involved in your business and making a difference to it. Mm -hmm. um, so there is, you know, there's within the funding rules that you can you can easily do that. But from a business point of view, nobody's ever come back and said, you know, that would work best for us, really. All right. Um, so the big question then, finding employers. I think um, over the last three years, we've had Ofsted, we've had the Amatic Reviews, We've had DFE in, we've had consultants, and everybody sort of sits there and it's that big question is, sorry. <laughs> the lights have gone off. <laughs> we have paid the electric bill in. Um, yeah, the big question is, how do you find employers? Um, sorry to disappoint, but to quite honest, there is no instant solution. Um, uh, what I would say, first of all, it does take hard work, um, without a doubt. Um, and I've given you sort of on this slide just an example of some of the things that I do. Um, so Yell, Google, in very, very simple search tools, um, obviously just to look at um, software developers in the area, digital support companies, you will get some, I quite often find with Yell that they'll give you a company and then when you go um, actually do a, a, a big, have a, um, a deeper dive into it, you find that that company's actually disappeared three or four years ago. So it's not always as successful. Um, networking, we have um, in the area, in the Tees, Tees Valley area, lots of local events, um, Chamber of Commerce, we do have what's called a Teesside Refresh, where digital companies come together literally in an evening on a monthly basis, everybody gets together. Um, um, on that point, the curriculum team join those networking events as well, so it's not just as Kevin that goes along to these networking events, we do too, as a curriculum team, um, to support um, finding the employers too. Um, LinkedIn, I, I mean, I, I, again, I, I probably had an account with LinkedIn eight or 10 years ago, uh, never used it properly until I, I took on this role. Um, and I found it invaluable for finding that not only just local employers, but also for getting an understanding of what's going on in the local area. Um, because again, people are always updating and saying, who's opening new business, who's looking for support, who's taking on a large project. Um, and also, I don't know how many of you use LinkedIn, but using the search facility, again, one of the first things that I started to do was I quite often would, would search for um, an employee that was a software developer 
or somebody that provided uh, network support, but then quickly realized that that sort of pool was quite small, but taking into account the fact that, for example, we've got large business in the area, so um, a large housing association that has many houses across the area, they also have IT support. So rather than just searching for the business, I then started searching for individuals with job titles such as web developer, network support. That again gave me probably twice the amount of people that I could start approaching. And I simply devised, so on LinkedIn, I think you're only allowed about an initial message of around 40 words. And I just devised a simple message just to say, were you interested in supporting students working at the college? Sent it out and to see who responded. And I would say I probably got a, a, a far better response from that than a number of other things. Um, news articles, publications, um, again, just look at your local business papers, what's going on. So um, there was, again, going back two or three years ago, there was a local article which talked about six new startup companies. And literally, I just searched every single one of the companies, sent them a straight email asking them if they were interested in supporting um, and working with the college. And again, that's been quite successful because literally um, what I found was they were all based in a hub. So within the local university, we have a startup hub. And effectively now I've got more and more companies keep coming on board um, from there because again, it's through word of mouth that they keep recommend recommending them. Uh, phone, you can phone people. And again, not everybody's comfortable with doing this. Um, but I always say, if you are gonna phone people, be very clear about what it is you want and what you're asking. Say, I took the role on about four, four or five years ago, and I used to sit in the office and I'd listen to other people and they'd phone up an employer and they'd say, can you give us a work, dog? can you offer a work experience placement to a student? No, thanks, and they put it down. It was just, to me, when I really listened to it, I think what I find is you've got to get in there, you know, ask, can I speak to the person who's there? If I can't speak to them, can, is there a contact number for them or a contact email? You know, I'm, I'm looking for a placement for a student at a college. Be very clear about it. Quite often, and again, I'd say that I did find people being very woolly that it was almost like surprised that somebody picked the phone up and then they suddenly didn't know what to, what to say. Same thing with emails, email people. You know, again, be very clear about what it is you're asking for. It's not a big woolly message about me and I work at Minnesota College and this is what I want to do. I'm just, you know, I want to secure a placement opportunity for a student at the college. Um, and again, listen to colleagues. Um, I work in the digital staff room. Again, if it's technical, I'm not interested, um, but I do listen to some of the conversations about who they're working with, which local employers they're bringing in. And again, if I know they're bringing in employees to talk to students, I'll try and get in there to meet them as well. And just a final point I put on there is one of the things I also noticed I came up with was when you start talking to employers, and again, I think this is historical, um, you know, I'm from a generation where work placement was making the tea or doing a bit of photocopying. But everybody seems to be in, everybody seems to be comfortable with what an internship is. Mm -hmm. The fact that effective there is no there is no difference. So I started again when I was emailing people was asking for an internship opportunity because again people understood an internship as a longer period of work experience as opposed to work placement or work experience. They just thought of it as something that's very sure. Um, so again, it's, these are just, for me, some of the little things that I've found sort of working through the process of the last few years. Um, Kevin, would it be all right if I just add a couple of things that I've just noticed as uh, when, when I've been speaking to centres? But um, one centre said to me that they do taster sessions with employers and tasters lead to placements. So they persuade the 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 employers, if they didn't want to do it straight away, maybe to just do a taster with students, and then they seem to always sprout into actual placements, which just seems like a good idea to me. Uh, the other thing that I've noted when I've been speaking to uh, different employers is they find it very hard if they want to give a placement of who to contact at the college. So it might not be a bad idea to have some sort of something they can press on one of the pages at the front. If you want to, if, if you want to offer a placement, press this and we'll get back to you sort of thing. Because I, th I think they find a lot of problems with that. Um, yeah, that that's my that's yeah. my two observations. Yeah, as a college, I mean, we have um, um, a, a generic email address of placements at mbro.ac.uk, um, which people can co to contact us through as well. I think the other thing about tasters is um, 
we 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 we, we do spend a lot of time bringing employers in to get to know the students as well. Um, and we tend to use the tasters where there is a slight sort of uncertainty if the placement's right for the student or the student is right for the placement. Um, but again, probably something we could look at exploring at going forward. Um, so sort of moving on, um, again, I'm sort of conscious of time, but once we do get an employer that's interested, um, it's not simply a case of an employer says, you know, today, is it Wednesday? Yes, I'll take a student, come in and I'll send out the first student tomorrow. Um, we put a lot of time and effort into getting the right student matched up with the right employer. Um, so one of, uh, one of the things that I'll do as part of my role is, um, is to actually agree with, with the employer the role that the student will be taking on. So we explore really what sort of skills will they need, what things will they be doing, um, the days they'll be working, the activities, in some instances, the employer will actually devise a project for the students. Um, and again, you know, if I, if I go back a couple of years ago, we had an employer who came with a very specific project they wanted the students to do. But as soon as they met the student and realized the level it was at, they completely rewrote that project. Um, this is where, for example, you know, we talk about discuss the model and any possible alterations. This is where, again, we, we, we always sort of um, have a conversation about Thursday, Fridays, or Monday, Tuesday. And I would say to date, no employers ever turned around to me and said, I'm oh, sorry, bar one, it doesn't work for me um, because we, for example, work from home on a particular day. Um, you know, again, it's something we may come up in the future, but that again is, is the discussion that takes place. Possible start dates. And again, um, the big one there though is the recruitment and selection method. There is nothing that says you have to do it this way. Um, effectively, I think we sort of, we, we, we started this method and we found that actually it works really well. Employers like it, we like it, um, and the students like it. In so much as to say, we don't just send a student out tomorrow because we think A, they live right next door to the employer and B, they haven't got a placement. We actually make them um, apply for the, the placements so one of the things that we do is, again, talking to the employer, you know, are you happy to come in and meet students? Um, and I, again, I would say a large number of employers are more than happy to do that. So we tend to bring them in. They'll um, deliver a short session. Again, it's up to them, 15 minutes to an hour, whatever they want. But I'll talk about their company, the opportunities within that company. And then what they'll be asked to do is to apply for the placement. Now, in most cases, and I would, I would say probably nearly in every single case, it does involve the student having to submit a CV. And I know there's people sitting there going, CVs a bit like, well, we don't do that anymore, but you'd be surprised how many employers still want to see a CV. Um, and again, quite often is within that, they want to see a GitHub link because they want to see what the student's been doing before previously. Now we totally facilitate that process. It's not down to the employer will support them through everything, but we'll do what they want to do. So we do the, the information, we do the um, application, the employer then shortlists, and then from there, they'll interview the students and they'll then make the final decision of which student they'll take. Um, it is, I would say the reason that we would say that it's effective because literally over the three years, we've only had one student um, who basically left the placement because it wasn't right for them. Well, the, the employer terminated the placement. We do put a lot of time and effort into that. Um, now, it can take a long, long time. And I think probably the most extreme one is um, we did have an employer that would agree to take some students. They, they decided who they would take within about two months. But again, because of their sort of certain restrictions and checks, they needed to go through. It then took us about seven months in total to get the students in place, but it did work um, and they did see it through. So, you know, that process, you don't have to do it, but I must, you know, I'm, I would say that it has been very successful. Um, and then the other part of my role is that I complete the relevant checks. So I undertake the health and safety assessments with the employer, safeguarding checks. Um, again, all of those which have to be done before we can um, place any of the students. Um, really that one there, that slide is just giving you again an overview of that process. Um, I don't really think unless anybody's got the questions. 
there's anything else. The way we advertise it, so um, we have a system in the college called Growfile, which we use, um, and I'll also basically um, share it on Teams, so the class teams so the students are aware of the opportunity. But I also talk to the curriculum team as well to see which students do you think I should really start to push this one to, because again, going back to the, the start, they've now got a better understanding of those students, so they, they know which students will be probably more suited to that placement. So we definitely don't, I do know other colleagues that look for to place a student that literally lives one mile away from a placement, but you know, we, it's, it doesn't always work. Um, I think it again, in extreme, I've just had a student that's next has accepted a placement probably 20 miles away. Now we'll support him getting him to and from the placement, but the placement is absolutely perfect for him and the employer feels that he's absolutely perfect for them. There's a question come up there, Kevin. Awesome. Sorry? Sorry. There's a question that's come up, Kevin, that says, when do you start the application process for students? Yeah. When do you start? When? Well, as soon as as soon as we've got the um the go-ahead from the employees to take on the student. Um, and again, what I will do is I'll talk to students as, as early as possible to say, you need to be aware that these placements will, will be coming up. So start getting your CV together. Research. Yeah. Research with the student, get the students to research yeah, as well. Research the company. Um, you know, I had three students go out to um, one of our employers a few weeks ago, and you know, we just basically couldn't get through to me enough. You've got to research the company, know a little bit about them, and ask the relevant questions when you go there. I mean, again, interestingly, one of the things that um, I always remember when I came, I took the job, somebody said to me, um, Kevin, what you'll find is that digital students, they don't talk a lot. Um, and again, that's something that I'm sort of really trying to bring on with them. Um, and again, right, way early on, I was asking employers, you know, what's the most important thing you look for in, um, in the students? And they always said communication. So that's one of the big things is about trying to get them to this research, understand, and ask the right relevant questions. Um, once they're placed, um, we agree the placement objectives and targets. There are examples of object, ob objectives that are available, but again, we adapt them to each individual employer. So we look at, um, again, really going back to the job description, what the offer was, um, and we make sure that it's, it reflects that. But similarly with the targets, we make sure that the target reflects the actual employer. Again, what I've tried to do, um, bring into more sort of from the last 18 months, is for the student to have a great two implants on the target. So what is it? They want to get out of by going to this employer so for example i don't want them going to a software developer when what they really want to do is be a, a web developer yeah. that's right <laughs> um on placements uh, and again I, i'm appreciative we may be aware of this but we have to do an initial review um because of the way we were say if i use the two days a week model i always tend to do my initial review um two weeks after Again, that's just a quick check in with the students and check in with the employer how everything's going. If it's fine, we just leave them to get on with it. Um, and then the mid review, halfway through, same sort of process what they've been learning, what skills they've been developing, their knowledge. And, um, and, and finally, the, the end review to sign the placement of. Say, so today we've only had one that's not worked out, and we did find our student under the placement. But well, that's, in most cases, I would say we've probably been sort of fairly light touch because I, again, I believe that the, the time and effort that we put getting the student, the right student, the right employer, does mean that once they're placed, um, we do need, just need this light touch. We don't need to intervene too much. Yeah, on, on that, um, the tutor for that student is fully aware that they're in placement and they'll do regular, um, what we could say is pastoral checks they won't speak to the, the, um, the employer or anything, but there will be that regular, how's your placement going? Are you okay? You know, so that, you know, we can leave them to be working with the employer and Kevin can do these reviews, but the, the curriculum staff and the tutors are still there to support if there is anything that is an issue. So even though those reviews look very um, limited, it is an ongoing process for us here as pastoral. Um, tracking tracking the placements, um, and again, I don't know how many people come across before, but we used to call Grove Farm. 
So um, it's an electronic system which um, is managed by myself. Um, each, each one of the, the word placement coordinators has access to this. But what it allows us to do is we set all of our placements up on, on Growfile. And it, once a placement's agreed, the employer gets an automatic notification, the student gets a notification, and they have to accept their placement. We put the targets into it and the objectives. Once they commence the placement, the student is responsible for logging all of their hours on Growfile. And what happens then at the end of each week, um, an email sent out to employer usually on the Thursday night, um, and they then approve the hours. Now, if a student decides to put in, I've done 500 hours in one day, the employer can very easily just correct that. Um, but it does mean that we're constantly getting information that gives us a, an overview of exactly where the students are and what needs to do. It will tell me which students need initial assessments, which ones need um, mid reviews and reviews. And I'll also get an email to notify me when the student has completed the 315 hours so we can do the final review. However, students can still continue to do their placement. Um, but it, it, we've had it in place now for um, two years. Um, and again, we, we, from a point of view of managing and tracking all your placements, we have found it to be really useful. Um, so again, that, that's just a, a quick overview about it. Again, if anybody wants more information, then just message me or email after it. Absolutely happy to give them some info on that. Um, and really, I mean, I sort of talked to you about, you've got to work with a curriculum team, um, whoever's responsible for doing the placements within the organisation, to say, I know nothing. And I said earlier about digital, and Sam still here sort of smiling in the background. Um, I've learned about Flutter as well over the, the last three years, but I know nothing um, technical. But the reason being is that, again, you know, I, I um, if there's any anything that I need to be aware of or anything that the tutors need to be aware of, I do speak to them. We're fortunate we do literally sit opposite each other um, in the office. So I can just sort of say, for example, again, that, you know, that something's coming from a web developer, which students do you think would be useful for me to target? Um, and again, in particular, they need support or some of you know, the, the um, additional help that they might need in the workplace. Um, again, I, I do try and make sure the crew team are fully aware that they know what the students are doing. So I constantly use things like Pro Monitor, yeah, to 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 make sure that everybody's aware of the, the things that we're doing, where there's issues, and again, try and deal with as many problems um, on my own first of all. If it is around attendance, um, not turning up on time, but again, we have very little of that. Um, share feedback as much as possible. Again, I think one of the things that I found was that I get so much positive feedback, but it wasn't always getting directly to the curriculum team. Um, so I think I just think it's important that they do know how well the students are doing that in the workplace. And again, I think one of the things that I reflected on last year, and I think I did share it with Sam, but else was, as much as sometimes I've had challenges with students about not responding to me, not responding to, uh, not turning up on time, but when they've actually been in the workplace, they're actually doing um, a fantastic job. It's important, you know, about exam time timetable, because again, um, you know, going back to the question about doing block weeks and things like that, I know, and I can make sure the students are aware and the employer is aware that there are timetables coming up and they may not be able to attend certain weeks or they need to start to prepare um, so they need some time off. But it helps me deal with, um, by doing that, it helps me to deal with any issues as well. And similarly helps them to deal with any issues if they're aware of some of the challenges that, that I'm facing. Um, ask for help when you need it. I'll be honest with you, I can't remember why I put that in, so I'm going to skip that bit. <laughs> <laughs> um, but just sort of trying to, to, to give you um, a few things about the employers. And again, talked earlier, you know, we said, Andrew, about the, the, the blog. Keep, effectively, keep your employers warm. Keep talking to them. Don't just take the placement and say, right, that's great. I'll see you back next year. You've got to keep talking to them. Um, you know, I send messages out every at the end of every half term saying, you know, reminding them that these are the Christmas holidays, these are the Easter breaks, the summer holidays. I'll be here if you want to contact me, but expect students in, don't expect students in. Um, 
you know, it really is. Um, I do have students going out. Literally, I've had two start this week. I've got more students starting next week. A lot of the students that started later in the year will work throughout the summer. So again, I will only do that where the students committed to do it. I'm not going to send start a student in May who is then going to get to June and say, right, I'm finished my placement now. I'll come back in September because you just can't do that. Um, and again, talked earlier about this whole roll on, roll off process. You know, think about the future. Have a plan in paper in your head. Um, mine's probably in my head, probably not my spreadsheet. It's not very good at them. <laughs> but I'm, I'm already thinking about. You know, I know the majority of my level twos, um, sorry, my second years where they're going. I already know which of my employees I can start to talk to about the year ones, so next April as well. And um, promote what you well, particularly the relationship. You know what you're doing with your employers, how they're supporting it as well. They like to see it, but again, by doing it, um, and again, I'm not a marketing expert. Um, I tend to do sort of trial and error, but I put as much thing, as many things as I can on LinkedIn. Again, because it does mean that, you know, I will get messages from people that I've never heard of. All of a sudden they say, well, you know, it's something we're interested in. Can we have a chat? Um, but most importantly, and I'll put it on there about your employees, treat them like a friend. And, and as I put in brackets, I know them all, their aches, pains and allergies. You know, I know, um, you know, chatting to somebody earlier today, uh, no, sorry, yesterday, I know she said COVID, I know where she's going for holidays. Um, I mean, don't ever repeat this, but I'm not really interested. But again, it's a good way of, of getting to know them. I always feel like anything within um, employer engagement is finding something, this, this commonality. You know, we'll, we'll chat about something through the meeting and then we'll get down to business. Um, but most importantly, thank them. Um, thank them for what they're doing because without them, you won't be able to deliver the T-levels. Um, we do need them. Um, and it, we were fortunate. We were able to, we did a, a thank you lunch um, a few weeks ago and we had like 50 employers that came forward. Now, although it's a thank you event, but it's also an opportunity to start scoping them out and talking to them about next year. Um, you've got to keep them warm. Um, and I think, sorry, one of the things I didn't include on there, um, quite often when I talk to other people, I always use um, the fishing analogy. Um, and I don't know how, even said, but if you, if, how many of you fish. But the thing is with fishing, you've got to hook something. Once you've hooked in it, once you've hooked the fish, then you reel it in and it's knowing when to strike for pulling it out of the riverbank or the, or the sea. And I always think about that when you're working with employers, that's what you've got to do. Get them interested, slowly bring them around to your way of thinking and then strike and get them to, to commit to something. Um, on the slides, I'm assuming people will get their copies afterwards. There are a number of resources if you don't really have them. The, I don't know how many people have seen the typical tasks. So again, these have come out quite recently, but what it does for each of the T-levels, it will identify some of the typical tasks that they will do within the work placement. So we're gonna, we are going to start using it almost as a benchmark. So when we're talking to the, the employer, we're effectively going down and saying, for example, will they be doing programming? Will they be doing development? And if they are, then we can say, well, actually we know that the role and this, this is right for the students. Um, there is the role descriptions, which have recently come out as well. That does, a, does mean that you have to go in and put a lot more in about the, the business and about what it is, but effectively they're more really for advertising the placement to the students, um, but they're there for you to have a sort of look through. So, sorry, I've probably taken up more time than I should have done, but that's be a very just quick overview. Any questions? All right, there, there is a there is a question. Am I correct in thinking that the placements uh, the placement is separate uh, to the technical quality?